Hello and welcome to another movie review. Yes, the sequel, Cyborg Cop 2. Yes, the one what stars a famous These guy movies with are a funny pack. Rated. Yeah, and Dave Bradley. The but in yes, seriousness, funny pack. he is a poor actor what had this photograph taken back in 1996. Ah, Dave Bradley might start doing two movies, but yes, our Wayne Rock Johnson is getting bullied with other celebrities coming out with these images of fanny packs. When we had Dave Bradley doing action movies by wearing one. So, we're going to strictly not make any jokes about fanny packs because many people liked them and it had that famous sex appeal as well but we're here to review the film Cyborg Cop 2 and the best thing we should start off with is the trailer I mean it's not like they got any merchandise of um, action figures on this movie at all maybe because of the funny fact Oh well, here's the trailer. They were old enemies. No, that's not mine. Jack Ryan is back in action. This time he thought he had brought him to justice. Wrong. The ultimate tactical warrior, the super cyber, comes standard with Gatlinger. Our pulsating laser generator. High intensity. Stop him for any weakness. Anything that can cause malfunction. of Cyborg. The battle has begun. Cyborg Cop 2. So, we're back with Jack Ryan, the cyborg killer. Or oh, is he a cyborg himself? But they must have spent a right budget on this one because They've got a really fancy intro, a nice pan to the right, oh yes, and it's more or less the same people in it as well, like Alona Shaw, oh she's not in it for some reason, or oh, her name in there. I guess I should expect more surprises. So, the beginning of the movie starts off with a old tattered old pickup truck and it's got two guys in the cab obviously and we find out one name of the dude is called Styx uh, and there's a bald haired dude what's um, actually driving it with a load of his mates in the back I presume or maybe some stump guy extras. Anyhow, they're at this um, old abandoned warehouse or very tatty place it looks like and uh, there's some biker dudes with biker vests and bulletproof vests on and they're hiding behind tin barrels but that doesn't matter, this pickup truck goes hurtling through and the guys in the back of the pickup truck got guns and start shooting everyone um, shooting through the bulletproof vest um, there's one scene where one of the guys gets killed by the mysterious biker dudes I presume because uh, he gets stabbed and he's ripped off the back of the pickup but this pickup is still going um, there's guys shooting at it there's no bullet hole squids hitting this vehicle um, but there's a lot of guys getting shot mm -hmm. 
by the guys in the pickup truck. Uh, yeah, not really explaining itself really well, but yeah, it, it's good entertainment because you've got loads of stunts in this. We've got guys um, falling off buildings, there's um, air rams, explosions, and not even that, they, they, these guys d uh, tend to shut this electronic door and they leave it a little bit late because the pickup truck just goes sliding underneath, a bit of firework uh, um, sparks go on and then it, now it's trapped in this um, warehouse where it's just knocking a load of um, clutter and uh, but they're still shooting and they keep wiping everybody out it's just explosively mental then the pickup pulls over and then uh, finally our bald egg guy who's been driving and smiling and he's been happy away killing everyone actually uh, he speaks <coughs> and he asks for a person called Fax what sounds like fat, or but to me I think he's saying fat. And uh, this guy's not turning up. You are 90 days overdue, and I thought I'd just come and pick up payment for the last two shipments. Well, that's still in my interest. Interest, huh? <laughs> that's right, boy. And you got 10 seconds to pay your debt. Alright, fair enough. In the beginning of the movie, you, you do presume they are maybe drug dealers or drug people because right at the beginning of the film you see a load of, well, a topless lady bagging drugs. So, yeah, uh, yeah, didn't want to get too excited um, about that. So, we presume these guys in the pickup truck are uh, dead. ten seconds to pay a dead people what produce drugs and stuff. Because uh, he's like so many days behind on his debts. I think it's 90 days. He said 90 Maybe days. we should come back tomorrow, huh? Right. That's right, boys. We'll come back another day. So I know you days over two days to pay this debt up, but then Fax has a load of guys will turn up behind him. So our bald head dude just says, Oh well, we'll maybe we should come back tomorrow, tomorrow, huh? And it all happens again. No, no, I'm just kidding. No, he does this slight move and takes half of the guys out. Well, well, it gets the attention of the DEA in Umma old antique police cars will turn up. Right, I think the main reason why they're in these old American cars is because this um, film was actually filmed in um, Africa. So that's why. I think they just borrowed a lot of um, car collectors' vehicles. So. Maybe that's why that pickup truck didn't get any bullet holes in it. Well, I think I do notice a bullet hole in it, but it's not. I think it's just a dint. I mean, there's a big dint in the door where he actually clobbered somebody with it when they first come in, rolling in. Um, but, yeah. So. This is Captain Salerno from the Drug Enforcement Agency. Wait on your mum to come out with your hands behind your head. Sticks. It's party time. <laughs> Let's roast us some pigs. So, so the double trouble psycho pop group turns up. And we all know who that Sorry, is. Just, yeah. Jack Ryan. You stay here with the captain. Who's there I'm going to you. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he's got a new partner. Well, seems very sentimental about him, like he's worked for him for years. But, but you it, take him you know, with the first one, he was him and his brother. Right, so they turn up at the warehouse acting like, you know, from a very familiar film you might think of. Yeah, a sequel of a very popular film in 1992. Listen, Captain, we yeah. are staying. We all know the rules of this one because it happened with the first one. They haven't got the tolerance to wait for my job. 
And this time, the captain's telling um, Jack Ryan, oh, yeah, you know, he's got a way. I'll give you just about anything you want. He knows it too well. Nicholas is famous line. Said he said he's yeah. kind of broke, but a new mayor we so, got in. What's so special about the ass wife? Jack Ryan. That Maybe he's read Ryan. the books about Ooh. him. Maybe. Who the fuck's Jack Ryan? That could be a possibility. I'm make you happy. He's the son of a bitch that wiped my brother last year. So, as it hasn't actually explained very well that we gathered that Jack Ryan has got his job back with the DEA because in the first one we knew that he doesn't like hanging around waiting for the squat team and now he's got the backup with his captain being there Jack Ryan should be alright you know, at least he's got, you know, his captain to cover him, to say, you know, you know, oh, yeah, he, he's gone toddling off and trying to play negotiator all on his own. So, the Jack villain Ryan. in this is yeah. uh, played by Morgan hey, Hunter and, and, Stark Raven ring a bell. and uh, playing the star Raven. Where Put him in the body he's bag. mentioning in about his brother. What makes you wonder, is he brother in the first film? Does he kill this mention as he gets killed in a raid? Is that the one from Jack Ryan in the third Cyborg Hot movie? I am the being foolish in Sanctuary now. If it was or not, it doesn't explain. Kill the bullet! Kill the bullet! Yeah. He made the wrong choice. You don't have to make the wrong choice today. We can talk this out. I don't want to talk to you, Jack. Oh, so you. the villain is more or less discussing how much, you know, it's Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan's little partner sneaks up behind him. Fucking hell. Yeah. 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 From a great height, because you'll notice in this movie, there's a lot of people falling off great heights. Because there's stunt guys in it. There's loads of stunts in this movie and great high falls. So. And this guy, you actually will see this guy in the same shot and he knocks something over in one shot. So he shoots his Jack Ryan's partner, he falls to his death, but he doesn't die. Oh no, he doesn't. No, Jack Ryan gets into a big pipe fight. Pipe fight with pipes, yeah. And he beats the hell out of our main villain. And then drops his pipe down, and then the villain springs to life and picks him up and starts bullying him and hurting him. And but don't worry, our hero, you know, yeah, he sorts him out. Yeah. So our villain goes hiding behind somewhere and gets one of these cocaine drug um, slaves. What the captain briefly mentioned to Jack Ryan that they're he hostages. Does it matter yeah, about the hostages to Jack slave. Ryan? He still went toddling off and went on negotiation on them and still... Oh, uh, 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 this is the screams at me! But I think she's saying that, but she sounds more like a chicken. But, uh, for, you know, nudity reasons, uh, you might check it out on the review about how she gets blatantly stabbed out of shot. Amazing, yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, that Please the gun! Okay. Jesse Starcraven noticed that um, Dave Bradley's partner is still alive, so he picks him up and threatens to blow his brains out. But we absolutely realise, whatever this guy says, he actually does it. So, he can't be reasoned with, he can't be bad with. Oh, it's not familiar again, doesn't it? So he kills his partner. I don't really realise when you're watching this movie that all the DA agents have been hauled back by a maybe a broken down pickup truck. Uh, you know, I don't actually understand why they didn't come over and now, you know, Jack Ryan out, but they didn't. So when his partner gets shot, Jack Ryan sort of like has a little tiffle with him again. And uh, they come along and drag Jack Ryan off him and 
Alright, go over there and have a calm down, you, you bugger. We'll, we'll, we'll sort him out now. You've done all hard work. Oh, your partner's dead. Wait on, the, the, the show a clip with a police car and an ambulance. But you don't see any paramedics actually packing his dead partner up. It's like DA agents, you know, it's with the caps on. And then it cuts to his partner's funeral. And he explains the of this what's happened to the villain. Yeah, he's yeah, gone to the prison on death row, so, you know, they're going to kill him. But something weird happens in the prison. A lot of prison guards go in. And he has a bit of a ding dong with him. But he's alright, they bend him over and they put an injection up his bottom. And then put him in a um, car full of chicken wire and take him to some mysterious place. So the DA agents pat his um, partner up and um, we've seen the Faroon roll and Star Craven's gone to this uh, mysterious place. So then we get a like a filler shot of Dave Bradley on a motorbike. As we all know he'll film in Africa. And they only got a couple of um, American vehicles and the rest of the vehicles are all European if you notice. That's just sad me, what's noticing that. And then you get a nice long shot that he goes up to his captain in his office and his captain has to remind him, wait on, you might have lost your job in the first one, but you know, you got job back practically. No, he doesn't say that. He just more or less says, you know, um, your jurisdiction is to be a DA agent, not working with um, federal, you know, death row inmates. This is a federal investigation. It is way out of your jurisdiction. Death row inmate escapees are federal business. Not ours, not yours. Where his captain has to remind him that, you know, his actual job is not to be a federal with death row inmates. But Jack's upset because we've seen in one of them famous newspaper clippings that our villain has actually escaped from prison! Escaped! Hello, so Jack Ryan wants to go out for revenge and get him because he killed his partner! So his captain gives him a piece of paper and tells him to, you know, this will sort you out mate, you know what I mean? Um, so what Jack's gonna do? So now it jumps to a scene where there's a scientist talking about caviar skin, some high-tech sunglasses and a baseball cap. And then he shows these weapons. As you saw on the trailer, what gets it all boosting up? Yeah, Gatling guns to high space laser cannons to a flamethrower. Ooh, really exciting stuff. And then the surprise and reveal is, oh yes, Jesse, Jesse Star Craven is lying on this thing as a cyborg. Oh yes indeed, oh yeah. And um, it's like this science block is giving a demonstration to all these investors maybe that, you know, that is in control of them and that he treats them like slaves. He's talking about slavery type things. They, they do what he tells them to do because he's got this bracelet. And then he explains about the bracelet and then some smart ass woman says, what happens if something goes wrong? Well, there's a big red button on this bracelet. You press that and that stops them all. Wow, I wonder if that will be the plot of the film about this bracelet that can control these cyborgs and this self-destruct button. Hmm, I wonder. This bracelet is the key. Whoever wears it controls the cyborg. We are their masters. And they are our warrior slaves. And if for some remote reason something were to go wrong, this red button is the panic override. Activate it and causes chip meltdown in the cyborg brain. They'll stop dead. 
So, the next shot is Jack Ryan going up for revenge because he's packing up this um, ammunition box full of um, bullets and stuff and he throws it in the rucksack. And then we see the young lad, if we remember the first movie, that his older brother wanted to adopt this yeah. lad. And the lad's there with some ironing, all nicely folded and all that lot. And he gives it to Jack and Jack, what does Jack do? do? He just throws it! I'm in this lot abusing this poor lad. And where's Alona Shaw in this? No, her name was not in the credits. So there's no actually no mention of her. So there's a knuckle door and it's his um, ex-partner's um, wife, you know, the, the guy who got shot. So his wife's there and she's actually explaining that, you know, she's not wanting revenge. She's more or less saying that, you know, I'm wearing a fanny pack to him as you, Jack. Like, there's some flirtation here. But Jack's only going about, you know, I've got no one looking after the kid, can you look after it? I'm going to go out for revenge over my partner! He seems more upset than his wife me. is. Something strange is there. Done. Oh, is it the pot of So, the plot goes like a very famous spy movie. What actually came to an end back in 1989. But it's 1994 and there were rumours that this famous spy was coming back. So some weird homage or maybe the plot in the movie that Jack's partner Mike who's died and his wife gives him, Jack, his cigarette lighter. A 10 year anniversary of being a DA agent. Anyhow Jack's like saying it's 90s now nobody don't smoke no more. Set of maybe famous, you know, spy does maybe. We don't know. But the point is, we all know this cigarette lighter is going to come into the end of this movie. Oh yes. <laughs> so Jack travels all the way to the prison, and the prison's really nice by letting him actually in the prison wing, where he can interrogate um, the character Stick. And um, he sticks his head in the toilet when he tried to shank him with a right perfect kitchen knife. And he practically tells him that some people let him out. And Sticks next thing, the thing you see him speaking to his prison staff officer. What I actually mentioned is that, you know, know, some people, some anti. Um, terrorists have let him out and they've took him somewhere. Who was it? Uh, it was it doesn't make man? sense, yeah. No. so yeah, you've got to keep on following on with this movie. Bill, Bill. I don't know why what? the prison guards could tell him in Some the first place instead of letting him in ATG. the pad. But it's some entertainment seeing a guy getting his head stuck Enter in the toilet. Oh, what? Well. Shit! Whatever you say. No, it goes on to the next scene where we see our science bloke chatting up a young blonde girl, but she's willing for it. So he takes her back to the laboratory where they we see all the cyborgs and um, he starts making out with her and um, She's a bit freaked out that she's got these um, cyborgs staring at her, but he like, reminds her that they ain't got no testicles or all, so it'd be fine. No, I want to go to another room, she refers to, but oh no, it doesn't last long, does it? When she starts stripping the science block off by removing that special bracelet and then throws it casually near to the cyborg or casually wakes up picks this bracelet up and then you can gather all sorts of mayhem like him opening his chest and revealing a weapon we haven't been exposed of yeah, a tractable spring loaded knife and he shoots this blonde haired girl and she goes storming into the room where all the scientists blocks and uh, 
chocolate and then you go overboard and clap and then she sort of flops over on a chocolate cake with a knife in her back. Ooh! Then all the scientists think, well, there's a lady with a knife in her back. Maybe it must be that scientist bloke what took her in there. So they all go toddling in there just to realise that all the cyborgs, well, there's four of them, uh, gather them all up. Even these scientists are all wearing bracelets themselves and they don't press that red panic button for some reason. Um, one scientist nearly did, but he got his arm ripped off. One tries attack, one with an axe, but you know. Um, our villain's got a new name called Spartacus. Yeah, Spartacus. You know, based on the true story of the, you know, the empire of slaves rebelling against the Romans. Yeah, it's going down this route, but we're cyborgs. Oh, yes, indeed. Yeah, it is. So, they actually execute every single body in the building by using the, this little pathetic frame thrower. And then they take the main scientist bloke with them. What's well, going to be interesting now? So they adopted the science bloke, but before they destroyed the building, um, Spartacus looked on their computer and found there was another facility of more cyborgs. And he came out with that lecturer's speech about slavery that went on, it can build the horizon of more cyborgs. And now it jumps to Jack Ryan going to a farm and he talks to an old bloke what used to be a sheriff what was investigating two years of uh, other inmates disappearing from prison conveniently saying they all escaped and something to do with the AG uh, the ATTG um, has something to do with it so Jack Ryan's getting his information from this old boy sheriff so yeah so Jack actually goes to the facilities of the ATTG. Oh, I've put too well many ATTGs in there. Uh, but the thing is, he's in this office, and then this bloke's got like a load of um, little trophies, and Jack just has to be an immature little child that starts attacking him. And the guy reminds us, like, this is out of your jurisdiction, practically. But oh no no, I'm not having this, I'm getting security and then you get some weird type of Steven Seagal fight there, you know, what you know, Dave Bradley does. But it is quite comical. So you can get this horrible tune, yeah. I ain't mentioning about the music just yet. But if you watch the film, you know what I'm on about. It, it, it's just funny, you know, watching this fighting scene. Like, he's actually making the bag, well, the security guys punch each other by swinging their arms. It, 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 it's just so funny. But yeah, you got this terrible music in the background all the time, and it's just the same tune. What is a bit of a disadvantage on this movie? If you ever want to ruin a movie, you spend all this money, just put the same repeated soundtrack over and over again. That's what I get the impression of this, um, you know, this So, next scene we see a helicopter landing and we see that brunette what was at the um, demonstration of the cyborgs and uh, we find out this character is Liz McDowell. She gets a phone call to her from that guy who was crying over his own truck. He's been damaged by Jack Ryan. She puts like a 24 hour surveillance on him. And uh, actually, our character doesn't have to do much after that because he's been followed by the bad guys now and all he has to do is beat them up. And that's what he actually does. Clear. Unlike Cyborg 2 models, the Super Cyborg is not merely a robot. He has emotions. He thinks. He 
feels. This Spartans. Well, they are perfectly designed. Always under our control. We are their masters. And they are our warrior slaves. They're not human. Anyway, they got no walls. Spartan Mass Production Center. I will to go inside the monument, and I will be the new leader. Let me get away from this, Monicus. You made us to be your slaves. But not nobody rules us. Let me get out of here. Your slaves will rule you. Your slaves will rule you. Your slaves will rule you. We are the masters of our own destiny. We will take our first human city. And all the inhabitants will be converted. And then city by city and country by country we will overrun them. Thereafter there will be no humans, only slaves. Let's hope the tracking system's fully off now. They had a tracker on it, but they don't seem to really bother when they actually turn up at the facilities and uh you see the um, science bloke struggling in this vehicle but our Spartacus sort of like grabs one of the security guards you know bangs his head and they burst through the gates with this little vehicle what makes it a little bit strange because the next shot you see is there's actually five cyborgs yeah so did they make the science bloke into a cyborg in that little short journey yeah, I'm the Archer. Obviously, I'm gonna get confused with this bit. The commanding officer of the four-member quad. So the next scene we see is Jack Ryan actually breaking into this building. He climbs up the drain pipe, has a snoop around, more time wasting on here. And then we notice a water bowl with some dog food in the other side of it. That means there's a guard dog, oh yes. And when the guard dog discovers Jack Ryan using floppy discs from, well, it was 1994, the dog is actually wagging its tail. But the security guards ain't friends. I'm a federal agent. And I'm fucking Red Riding Hood. <laughs> and like, one claims he's Red Riding Hood. Uh, yeah. But this is the part of the film where it's meant to have some humour. Bit like the first one, what was quite bad, but this is the only time you have a bit of humour in this movie. That, you know, Jack Ryan actually blames the guard dog, it, it was the guard dog's fault for him beating up the um, security guards up. Yeah, not making sense, is it? It's not your fault. <laughs> So our character Liz McDowell comes back in and she's been told that the um, facility has been taken over by the cyborg. But she's not that bothered that she can say, well, we can easily cut the fuel supply to her and the backup generators will soon a charge, meaning that the cyborgs can't make an army for some reason. But our Jack Ryan, well, casual dude, he goes to a bar and makes that old sheriff again. But Liz McDowell is still sending her villain uh, ATTG -T guys after him by putting the pressure on him, by leaning on him. And they literally do by running him over in a phone booth. Oh, yeah. Back in the days, you know, before mobile phones, well, the mobile phones were out. I mean, this is a slight, lovely collection of them uh, in 1994. But yeah, he's gone into an old vintage thing called a phone booth. Yeah, it was still a popular thing back then. So, yeah. Um, and I think in this movie, they were definitely trying to get rid of phones in this movie, especially landlines phone booths and all that lot. It, you know, in 1994, mobile phones were getting popular then. And that's only why I can describe it. Yeah, uh, for this scene. Nico, it's Roman. Let's go bowling. 
So, Jack Ryan might have spoke to his captain on this old phone booth malarkey, but the thing is though, next shot we're seeing Jack Ryan more or less riding around where this power station is. Oh yeah, this is where would the cyborgs are. Spartacus, the humans have cut our main new supply lines. And they actually realise that the human race have cut their fuel supply, but that does not defoil our little cyborgs. No, they can realise that we can go down road to local petrol station and... Do you have any diesel fuel? Yeah, over there. Over there? Yeah. Thank you. Get some diesel for the generators. Aye, and that's what they do. Even Jack Ryans is already sneaking around the power station and looks over from a great eye and sees, oh yeah, they're leaving. Oh, I better follow them. So now, they go to the petrol station. So our cyborgs actually turn up into a petrol station. And I presume the guy behind the desk must be the manager. So poor mechanics yeah, to get fun. mocked you're by the cyborgs me. by repeating what they say. One gets crushed by a car and one gets brutally strangled by an exhaust pipe. And the manager, well, he shoots Spartacus and stuff with his shotgun and Spartacus doesn't seem to do anything, just let him shoot away. But when he rings, using the old landline, oh, that annoys him and he breaks his neck. And the next thing, this is where the movie goes a little bit very slow-mo. Yeah, Jack Ryan turns up, we know he's been tailing them. But a customer's turned up in a white um, T-top um, Camaro. And I presume it's mother and son because um, the little lad says, Oh, Mum, can I watch the mechanics do the fixing cars or whatever? And he's watching them brutally getting murdered by weird fat cyborgs. And um, the mother goes into pain and realises everyone's dead and panics off into... Ha -ha! Off the pier, I'm legging it. Alright, sir, get in the car quick. And the little silly black falls over like a idiot. But don't worry, Jack is there to save the day in slow mo. Yeah, he goes riding along, picks the lad up. Mum's not that bothered that some weird strangers picking her son up on the motorcycle were all. And he's lucky enough, it's a tea top, and he just throws the lad in. But, lucky enough, the sheriff apartment turns up. I presume all the department turns up. All the police force have turned up with police helicopters and everything. It's like a certain other, another popular movie back in 1992. Yeah, it's gone that way, but it's more of a low budget. So, you're getting the old police guy getting blown up, the old stunt guys getting blown up in air rams and all that lot. There's the, the, the most fantastic pipe roll you'll see with a police car. There's the actors getting run over, uh, pretending to be cyborgs. And um, anyhow, the big showdown is that Jack Ryan turns up in the petrol station. He sneaks in while this palaver's going along. And he right. makes Star Craven. But Star Craven puts on it his normal, natural voice, what we saw at the beginning. And Jack Ryan isn't aware he's a cyborg at this time. And he shoots him in the leg. And Star Craven pretends that he's hurt. And then Jack goes over to put handcuffs on him. And then next thing, the cyborg attacks him by picking him up and throwing him away from him. And then he grabs him again and throws him through a window. We just witnessed this cyborg breaking people's necks and shooting knives out of him. No, don't kill Jack Ryan like that. No. He just toys with him by throwing him about. So, yeah, all the rest of the cyborgs are taking on the police force. And you'll see that same footage from the first one where you see the little toy helicopter getting blown up. Yeah, that happens.
Will Jack Ryan survive the battle of the wits of against the cyborg? Or will the cyborg get the upper hand on Jack? Don't forget, this will be continued next time.